Hey everybody, I'm Jim Classic, and you are watching Geek and It. So, what we have here is Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Studio Series Megatron. I may have mentioned once or twice how I'm not a fan of the Bayform as Megatron. However, I do kind of like this version of him featured in Revenge of the Fallen. Starting with the box... We see an open window of Megatron in robot mode, the Takara Tommy logo up at the top, the Generations logo, the Transformers banner down the side, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, number 13, Megatron. Moving on to the side of the box, we see the Studio Series logo again, Megatron's mug and the number 13 up at the top, another shot of Megatron in an action pose with the Autobot logo up at the top, don't know why that's even there. Moving on to the back, we see product shot, product shot, big screen inspired, collect them all at the bottom, and there is something loose rattling around inside the box. I, I don't think it's anything broken per se, I, I think it might be a piece that came untabbed, but we will have to see. So, without further ado, let's open this guy up and see what he is all about. Here we have Megatron out of the package and in vehicle mode. As we can see, he has a very Cybertronian, alien-looking tank mode. I mean, this thing is just a uh, this thing is just some kind of crazy-looking death machine. It's got uh, it's got its primary gun here. It's got uh, a secondary and tertiary gun here, which I don't even think was part of the original uh, CGI model. I, I have a feeling this was artistic licensing. Uh, one noticeable thing about this tank mode is that the the small wings are missing, and the kind of like clamshell design that was kind of made up the tank. So I, I I can't exactly say this is a a a true studio series version of Megatron because I don't really think this is what his vehicle mode looked like. This is more like an offshoot. Of the design, I mean, it's still close to it. It still looks like it. It's just, I think, I think the the designers definitely took some artistic licensing and um, made some alterations. Maybe they thought it improved it, or maybe they just, maybe this was the best that they could do. Either way, I'm not complaining about this vehicle mode. It's got a lot of cool details. It's got a lot of cool stuff and nifty things. Uh, most of the plastic is cast in this unpainted gray. There is a lot of, you know, uh, 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 bronze and silver coloring, especially within the treads. There's a lot of gizmos and metallic, uh, me mechanical stuff and gears and things all throughout, you know, the, 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 the tread. It, it actually looks really cool. I really, I really love this ridiculous uh, tread system that they have. If you move over to the back, you're going to see some of the booster rockets because this is a flying tank after all, you know, please. Let's not, let's not forget, you know, we have, a, we have a flying tank here, but we see some molded detail which resembles the boosters. Uh, the, the other boosters are kind of, kind of hidden in there, and you do see some exposed robot kibble and stuff. Again, it's Bayformers. It's this is complicated enough as it is. This is probably the best that they could do. Uh, we have um, visible head syndrome, but you know, even even in the CGI model, his head is visible. Um, I, I like how it's kind of covered up by this Mad Max kind of face grill, or even 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 dare I say, uh, uh, Viacon Beast Machines Megatron. I, I'm kind of getting a vibe from that. Even even a little mustache, yeah. If you hold it for, if you hold it from that angle, Megatron has an old timey mustache. <laughs> Dudley Do Right will never stop me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, and and I should clarify, I am sober. Okay, but anyway, uh, you know, like I said, we have a pretty cool looking tank mode. I I really actually dig this tank mode and I, I I am so freaking critical 
of Bayformer's Megatron, you have no idea how critical I am of this character. So when I say I am digging this vehicle mode, I, I really do dig this vehicle mode. Now, I don't have a lot of uh, figures available to me right now to do, a, to do a, a vehicle mode comparison. I have one, and he is the uh, Studio Series Deluxe Class Barricade. Obviously, Megatron kind of dwarfs him. Barricade is not a large fellow anyway. But, yeah, he, he is definitely bigger than the, the police cruiser. And, uh, that's okay. I think I have said all that I can about this vehicle mode. Let's get to transformation. And here we have Megatron in his robot mode. Finally. That transformation was kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie to you. It really was. And it's not that it's a complicated transformation. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the, the, the knee pads and the uh, reverse knee pads kept coming off. That was very frustrating. Another issue, and this is when I first got the figure, is that I found the instruction manual to be quite useless. I had to uh, stop what I was doing to watch one of Optobotomus's videos to figure out what the hell I was doing because I was getting tripped up in certain areas. If you noticed, I was having some difficulty lining this up back here. Uh, I was having a hard time locking some of these panels into place. I was fiddling around and dropping, you know, things and whatever. And again, just an issue with some of these panels. They just they just come off a lot. They come off a lot, and it's very frustrating having to constantly stop what you're doing to find it, find a piece on the floor, and then resume what you were doing. Anyway, let's get into the detail and the nooks and crannies of this guy, shall we? Megatron stands large and in charge. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. This is Revenge of the Fallen we're talking about. <clears throat> Megatron stands large and in second in command of the Decepticons. <laughs> oh, man. Not much has changed in the area of paint deco. It's still a lot of unpainted plastic with some silver and bronze paint, etc., etc., etc. Not really all that much different from the tank mode. I would really prefer to see some dry brushed paint detail like we have on Studio Series Grimlock. What we have here is a pretty imposing scrap metal monster robot, and I kinda like the design. I mean, yeah, this guy is as much Megatron as Gizmo Duck is Iron Man, but I gotta admit, it's still a pretty neat robot mode. The face sculpt is awesome. 
I mean, yeah, it, it's nasty, snarling, spiky face with a lot of crazy detail, and I'm just loving those beady red eyes. They're recessed within the sockets, but they are there, and in the right lighting, they do look pretty menacing. There's a lot of elaborate robot detail all throughout the toy. I'm really digging the shoulder blade rocket boosters. His arms are asymmetrical. For the right arm, we have the famous murder arm, which is all bulked up and integrated arm cannon with a massive lobster claw weapon. His left arm, also known as the gimp arm, is a bit more beefed up in this version. He even still has his creepy spindly fingers, which are better represented in this toy than they are in the movie, in my opinion. The tread legs have, like, the most detail. They just look awesome with the gears and the things and the doodads and even just the treads themselves. It, it, it's a very busy mess, but I, I complain about Bayformers all the time. But this does look pretty cool, though. I would say my one issue with the overall mold is that when you look at Megatron from the side, <laughs> he is absolutely hollow. Maybe there was nothing the engineering team at Hasbro could do about it, or maybe this is some kind of an allegory about Megatron's overall character in the Bayformer series. I, mean, I think it's probably the latter, to be honest. The articulation of Megatron is that he has a ball-jointed head with a hinge that allows him to look down, though it is part of the transformation. Universal shoulder joints on both asymmetrical arms, as well as bicep swivels and elbows. Where the arms differ in articulation would be in the fingers. For example, the left arm, the gimp arm, has two sets of fingers which can rotate or swivel, uh, rotate uh, separately from different hinges. For the right arm, the bottom claw is retractable, and strangely enough, he has an articulated vestigial thumb which he can flex. This Megatron does have a good range of motion. However, a really irritating thing about this figure is that the legs and inverted knee pads just keep popping off. Every time I reposition this figure, a piece snaps off and I have to stop what I'm doing to reattach it. Let's move on to comparisons. We will start with Voyager Class Studio Series Starscreen, right there. We will also continue on with the Leader Class Blackout, who's got to go right there. And um, even though I haven't done a video on him yet, uh, I still haven't done it yet, but here is the Deluxe Class Studio Series Barricade. And this is where Megatron stacks up with his uh, with his three other Studio Series Decepticons. I, I don't have any more Studio Series Decepticons, um, but just just for the heck of it, I'll, I'm also going to throw in Dark of the Moon Shockwave. Just to add a little bit of color. We we need some color in here, and uh, so that's that's where Voyager Class Megatron kind of scales in with everyone. I mean, I think Shockwave. You know, if they were to make a Studio Series Shockwave, he'll probably be just as tall as Megatron, but that that works for me, I think. So, I, I guess uh, not much else I can say. I'm going to wrap up here. What else can I say? Studio Series Megatron has a really cool robot mode. I, I do dig the robot mode. I I do like the vehicle mode. I do like his tank mode. The the problem is it's the transformation which can be a real pain in the butt sometimes, especially locking certain things into place. And some of these panels just come off and it really gets on my nerves. You have to you have to have a cool head while transforming this guy because you will lose your temper. I didn't show this. I don't normally do, like, blooper reels, but aside from the panels, I had to do three separate transformation scenes because his head popped off, and I lost it for about 20 minutes. <laughs> so, I, I suppose that's my biggest gripe about this Megatron. Uh, the, the Just parts pop off, and you have to just stop what you're doing, reattach it, or look for it. And the instruction manual is not all that much helpful because I was 
I kept getting caught up in uh, shifting the legs during transformation. I didn't realize I had to shift the legs. Nothing was tabbing in, and I was getting annoyed with that. So it, it, it's little things like that which make him a little bit frustrating. But I can't argue with the results. I do like this robot mode. I do like the vehicle mode. I would say if I had one other complaint, and, and this is not a hill I'm going to die on, I would like more diversity when it comes to color, airbrushing, you know, a little bit more nuance instead of just matte gray with a little bit of silver and some bronze. I would like to see a little bit more color out of this guy. Hasbro, what are you doing? I'm not going to spend another 30 bucks on a nicely painted version with another head sculpt. Really, all you had to do was paint this guy properly and had just made a swappable head because it comes off easily enough. Hasbro, get your act together. Grrr. Other than that, yeah, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. I don't know if he's worth $30 pretty cool, but he's pretty cool. I'm Jim Classic, and you've been watching Geekin' It.